In the future, quantum computers have the potential to solve certain problems exponentially faster than classical computers. But which problems can they solve exponentially faster? And which problems would we do just as well to solve using a classical computer? So these are the questions that we're really interested in as quantum algorithms researchers. Now to set the stage, it makes sense to talk a little bit about the relationship between algorithms and computer hardware more generally. A computer is a programmable machine which obeys the laws of physics. An algorithm is a recipe for solving a problem. So an algorithm is a sequence of steps that leads you to the solution. Of course, if you design an algorithm, you have to make sure that the machine you plan to run it on can execute each of those steps. Generally speaking, this is not much of a problem because um, algorithms designers like to abstract away the machine and work using a basic instruction set that um, can then be mapped to the machine afterwards. And one of the central principles of theoretical computer science is that if you use the right basic instruction set, then any real world machine you could build, you can run that algorithm on it. Um, this central tenet of theoretical computer, computer science held up for about 50 years, but we now understand that there's one exception to this rule. And the exception is quantum computers. Quantum computers use a fundamentally different instruction set than classical computers. As a result, they can run different algorithms, algorithms you could not run on classical computers. Those algorithms make use of quantum effects like non-locality, entanglement, superposition, and interference. And so when you're designing a quantum algorithm, your aim is to exploit those quantum effects to make you get the solution faster. Generally speaking, an algorithm might start by taking your classical input to the problem, processing that into a quantum state, which is a superposition of an exponential number of classical states. You then aim to transform that quantum state, which encodes the problem, into a quantum state which encodes the solution. And from that quantum state you measure and you get the solution. Now, of course, to make this work, it's a bit of an art. And you have to design an algorithm which follows these, these steps for a given problem. And some of the areas where we have such algorithms, where we have quantum speedups, include the simulation of quantum systems, number theoretic problems like integer factorization, and certain types of search problems. Now, one of the caveats is that most of these algorithms are designed for future quantum computers, which have many, many qubits. And right now, we're at a moment where people are building small and modest-sized quantum computers. And so it's an exciting research area to understand what can we do with those devices before we have basically an unlimited number of qubits.